is a video about how I lifted my two car garage, just 24 by 22 feet, made a 2 by 4 construction. Uh, step one, as you can see here, is remove as much weight as possible. So you see on the outside I removed the shingles, tarped it up. I've also removed the windows. Because when you lift, you're probably just going to smash those. So I took them out and ordered a couple new ones. Also some skylights for future upgrades. And you can also see I reinforced the windows as well once they were uh, removed just to make them stronger because there's going to be a lot of pressure lifting on that wall. Backside, you can see I also reinforced the door. I'm actually going to be leaving the door on to the lifting process so I decided to reinforce it here. Obviously this side is strong due to the beam across the top but it uh, we don't want the walls to wander so I basically reinforced them there with a number of two by sixes and these are I use pretty substantial legs. These are uh, put by GRK fasteners that are about a five inch and about a shear, a shear rating of about 700 pounds, so they're pretty strong. I've also used a smaller fastener here throughout, you'll see more of them. These are a four inch, uh, it's called an R4, also made by GRK. Now let's go on the inside. Now we're on the inside of the structure. So there's a lot of things that happened here. First, most notably, there's no drywall, there's no insulation, there's nothing in the ceiling. I removed everything of weight uh, that I could locate. Next, I had to detach it from the ground. So you can look down here. Every garage is going to be a little different. Mine had bolts and nuts on them. Uh, I actually put lemons filled with salt. I could cut lemons in half, put salt on the half of lemon, and then that actually dissolved a lot of the rust and they came out. Some of them actually came out uh, with fingers. You can see another one there. So after it was detached from the ground, then I had to reinforce it. <coughs> so you notice there's lots of different beams. Here's where I reinforce the windows. There's just a two by six going across. You also want to do all the corners to keep it true. So I put two by fours up to the trusses and in each corner, these are just two by sixes. A lot of this is just scrap wood I had laying around across the corners. I did all that in each of the four corners. Now next, do the actual lifting. I use these two by tens on the walls. So I got a 16 foot across the bottom and you notice it looks like it's bent and that's because it actually was bent. I placed the jack right here and jacked it to push it down to sort of pre-deflect the beam so when it actually starts lifting, it won't uh, start deflection, it'll already be deflected. So uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough, it should be close. Because the, the wall is obviously longer than 16 feet, I had to go with another board, so I put another one just across the top on each end, roughly in the center of the lift point. So you can see the lift points are down here. Each lift point is uh, lifting on, uh, these are 22 feet wide, custom ordered LDL beams. And you can see I've got little bottle jacks, 12 ton bottle jacks under each one right on the concrete floor. And for blocking, I cut up a whole lot of these. These are just four by sixes. Uh, why four by sixes? Uh, they're relatively cheap and plentiful and <clears throat> they're flat. And they're also of enough thickness, so you didn't want them to be too high, such that when you lift, you don't have to lift too far. So those jacks have a lifting range of about five and a half inches. These are about a little over four inches. So that seemed like a reasonable number. I'm lifting 21 inches. Uh, a little extra breathing room for 24 inches. Uh, that gives me a little extra space, so six blocks of wood. <coughs> so you can see on each side of the garage, I ran the LVL beams across. And of course, there's the one in the front doing the same thing. The studs, I tried to pick studs that were straight and true and based on the fact that they have to lift a little bit more of the outside wall, because the outside walls are just going to come up with it, I decided to uh, bias them a little towards the outer edges, particularly at the front because there's a full wall there, whereas at the back we just have the garage door. So a little bit of math told me that these were about the best spots. And they also had to line up from side to side. Uh, here's another example in the corner, reinforcing it as well. And then there's the, the beams on the outside of the door. Fabricate the uh, the pony walls that are going to go underneath the wall. So in my case, I'm lifting 21 inches, which takes me to a 9, nine foot 10 inch ceiling. So I constructed these uh, little pony walls, which are 21 inches high. You notice that in the pony walls, I pre-marked and drilled out where those footer bolts go. So basically the garage will get lifted up slide the pony walls underneath from the outside over the, the little bolt stubs 
bolt them down using the same nuts and the garage down on top of it. The piece I missed here is what I did in the in the ceiling up in the rafters. So this is a, a 2 by 10 that's actually lagged into each one of these trusses and then it's lagged into the into the gable end and then right down into the header. Now the goal here is when this whole garage starts lifting you can imagine that this wall on the side here is actually going to start drooping down because there's nothing actually lifting it, it's just being lifted by the side walls. So my concern is that it might start to droop and could even fall off prematurely. I obviously want it off but I don't want it off in the middle of the lifting process. So I put these 2x10s here and again with those heavy duty RSS uh, lag screws and that should hopefully just give it the added strength it needs. I'm sure those will deflect a little bit but I'm hoping it'll spread the weight across these last few trusses which of course are lined up almost perfectly with where I'm lifting. So it shouldn't be a problem for that truss to lift just a little extra weight or these trusses to lift a little extra weight. And uh, yeah, that should be about it for now. And while here is actually going to be removed entirely, uh, the siding is going to be reused, but you'll notice the new concrete slab, so it's going to be extended by about seven feet just to create a little workshop. So not only is the garage getting taller, it's also going to be getting longer. And over here we can see my other pony wall is just sitting here waiting to go under uh, when the lift happens tomorrow. So. Uh, once we get the garage in the air, I'll take a few more videos and show you the rest. Here we are, we're about 21 inches up, we're almost there. We've uh, been using a pyramid scheme for the lift, as you can kind of see there. So right now it's permanently rested on this side. We're jacking up one side at a time, that seems to be more effective, because otherwise it tends to want to dance a little. So, um, no real big issues thus far. So here we are. It's about two days later now. I didn't get a chance to finish the video until now. The garage has been up. Survived a pretty nasty windstorm. Uh, as you can see, the pony walls are under and fastened. So we slipped each of them in over the bolt. So I overlarged the bolt hole a little bit and we slipped them in from the outside. And then fastened them here. So I used a, a I actually used, you can kind of see there's a lock washer in there as a spring. So it'll count, compensate for it contraction of the wood so I put one on the top and one on the bottom just give it a little extra uh, getting it back in position was a bit of a doozy what we ended up doing and unfortunately I don't have the setup still is we set up uh, this was the corner that was out it was out uh, this way about two inches further than it should have been and thus it, it actually the whole structure twisted probably a fraction of a degree uh, because this went out so obviously the the far front corner actually came back this way also. And so in order to correct, we actually put a jack sort of in the middle under that beam and we jacked it up at a bit of an angle. And so the jack was actually mounted on a post which is a bit of an angle and so in effect, we jack it up a bit and then we'd push from the outside, just tap with a sledge and the whole thing would hop. And we also put some grease, I don't think you can see it on here anymore, but we greased the tops of the blocks as well so it could kind of slide, it was less resistance. And that moved it actually pretty easily. And then when we brought back in this corner, well, a total of 21 inches. I'm now just in the process of running some verticals. So as you can see, this isn't going to be strong enough. So in a few places, I'm going to be running verticals just to strengthen it as well. And then of course, on the far end, we're going to be expanding seven feet. So that will also add some rigidity as well uh, to the structure. And so that's about it. I'll just go outside and capture a little video of the outside too. Here's the final view from the outside, just to kind of wrap it up. As you can see, the pony wall's already been installed. I actually have already framed in the door here to add a little bit of vertical strength. Uh, the pony wall mechanism, or the way of doing things, is it creates a, a hinge point, of course, right here, which can be a little bit dangerous. So uh, if you can extend the studs all the way to the bottom, I really recommend it. 
um, I, as I've done here, obviously. And there's going to be a number more because there's actually going to be a carport poles in here. But on the other side, you can actually see where I've sistered up a number of foaming studs. There's a couple more down there. And it just helped prevent the whole thing from hinging. So I would recommend that. But anyway, that's it. That's how I lifted my, my double garage. And look over here, we're going to be making it longer too. So that'll be some other video. Thanks.